Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll show you how to tie the three easiest tie knots, how to combine them with the right type of shirt collar, no matter if you use a knit tie, a thin tie, or very thick tie. <laughs> is a visual focal point in your outfit trying to put the other person's eyes focusing on your face. Because of that, it's important to know how to tie a right tie knot that works well for your face so it flatters your overall appearance. Whether you're just getting started with tie knots or if you need a little refresher because you have an upcoming interview, this video is for you. We'll cover the forehand knot, the oriental knot, as well as the Kelvin knot. I wear these three tie knots regularly. But which tie knot to choose depends on what kind of shirt you have and what kind of tie you have. So let's figure out how to choose the right tie knot for the tie and the shirt color you have. First, I would start with the shirt style and the collar because once you have that, it's easy to choose an accompanying tie knot because the tie knot is something that's up to you versus the shirt collar is something that you have and you can just change. Think about the shirt collar as a partner to your tie knot and the tie knot is flexible, the shirt collar is not. That being said, for example, if you have a really large Windsor knot with a classic collar, it just looks weird. Likewise, if you wear an oriental knot or a foreign hand knot with a super spread collar, it looks off too because you see a lot of the tie band on the side of the knot. Now on the flip side, if you want your tie knot to look good with your collar, you have to make sure that the knot fills out the space that is left in between the collar. Ideally, you should just see the knot. There should not be any excess band that is visible on the side. Likewise, the knot shouldn't be so big that it's partially covered up by your shirt collar. Now, a little bit of cover up is okay, but if you have a huge cover up, it just looks weird. So in today's video, I picked a medium spread collar shirt and I chose a Kelvin knot with a medium thick tie. You can see the tie knot ends just underneath the collar, which is ideal because it fills out the space without being overlapped too much. The tie you choose will have a huge impact on how your knot looks. If you choose a thinner tie, you will get a thinner knot. A thicker tie will result in a thicker or bigger knot. Of course, that's not the end of it. It also depends on what type of tie knot you choose. So a thin tie paired with an oriental knot will yield a very tiny tie knot. On the other hand, if you have a medium thick tie, maybe you go with a Kelvin one because you go with a loop once around, which makes your knot a little bigger but it's all about keeping the balance. As you can see, there's no absolute right or wrong. There's just the right size tie knot for your shirt collar. As you build up a shirt wardrobe over time, you will understand what type of a knot size you need for each shirt collar, and then you can pick the right tie size. And maybe one day you wanna wear a double Windsor, other days you wanna wear a four in hand, and so you can grab the right tie at the right time. So now that you know how the shirt collar, the tie thickness, the tie knot work together, let's take a look at the three easiest tie knots, starting with the oriental. In general, I would say get a more classic collar with a medium spread, definitely not a wide spread, because it's a very small knot. Because of that, it's also great to be worn with a collar pin or a collar clip, because it doesn't take up too much space. First, the slimmer end has to be on your right side. The wide end has to be on your left side. Position the wide end so it's much longer than the short end. Typically for me, it means the short end ends about a hand width above my pants waistband. Now, cross the slim end over the wide end with the seam facing up. Pinch the intersection of the two sides with your left index finger and thumb. Fold the wider end over the intersection and your pinched fingers. Wrap it around and pull it snug. Now, take the wide end and insert it between the gap between your collar and the tie. Pull it through, and then insert the tip of the wide end into the top layer of the knot. Hold the knot while you pull it all the way through gently. Before finally tightening the knot, make sure there's a little pinch of fabric on top of the long part of the tie so you get a dimple. What's a tie dimple? It's a little pinch in your tie that is an intentional crease, it's there because it breaks the light and makes it look elegant in a certain way, highlighting the 
non-symmetrical nature of your tie knot and the nonchalance of your outfit. Once the knot is tied, adjust the dimple so you like it, and now it's time to pull up the knot. Just pull on the shorter end with your right hand while holding the tie knot with your left hand. Some people like to put the slim end through a keeper. Personally, I prefer not to do that because it's a little more casually elegant that way. Of course, if you want, you can also wear a tie bar with it. That way, your tie stays straight all day. Next up, let's look at a four in hand knot. It is probably one of my favorite knots because it's asymmetrical and it's very simple to tie. So it works with most medium thick and thicker ties. It's also my knot of choice for knit ties because anything bigger is just too dramatic and big. Even though there are dozens of possible tie knots out there, the four in hand is probably the most popular around the world. Now, it is very similar to an oriental, but it starts with a seam side facing down towards your chest or neck. Just like the oriental, it's also great for collar pins and collar clips because it's very small too. First, drape the tie around your neck with the wide end on the left side and the thin end on your right side. Again, you wanna adjust the length so the slim end is shorter. Typically, it ends about a hand width above my pants waistband. Now, cross the wide end over the slim end with a seam facing towards your chest. Now, pinch the intersection, wrap the wider end once around 360 degrees. This will form an opening over your left index finger. Now you can pull the white end from behind, pull it all the way through. And then put it through that hole you just created. Now with your right index finger and thumb, hold the knot and with your left hand, pull the white end through that little knot. Before finally tightening the knot, pinch the top part so you get that desired dimple. Then pull the knot tight and ultimately hold it with your left hand and with your right hand, pull in the slimmer end and wiggle it up so it fits neatly in the desired collar space. You don't want it to be more on one side or on the other. You want it right in the middle so it's not overlapped and it looks neat. Again, this is an asymmetrical knot, so depending on the tie you have, may look more asymmetrical, but it's desired. That's part of the look. The third tie knot is the Calvin knot. It's basically an oriental knot that's more voluminous because you wrap the tie around once more, thus giving you a bigger knot. Again, drape the tie around your neck with the wider end on your left, the shorter end on your right. Again, adjust the length, so the slimmer end is about a hand width above your pants waistband. Cross the slim end over the wide end and pinch it with your index finger. Fold the wider end over the intersection of your pinched fingers and go once around and pull it really tight. Now, once again, pinch that part with your thumb and index finger of your left hand. Now wrap the wide end around once more. Come through the back and pull it up gently. Now you take the wider end and you stuff it through the hole you just created. And pull it down. You do that while you have your left hand holding the knot and with your right hand, you pull on the wider end and pull it through. It's important that you pull that wide end through just that one loop, not that double loop. Otherwise your knot might look odd because there will be two layers that can be seen. Now it's the same thing as before. Make sure there's a little crease in the end so you get that desired dimple. And then once the knot is tight, pull it up. Once the tie is fully tied, you ideally want the wide end and the slim end to be exactly the same length, ending at about the middle of your belt buckle. Sometimes it can be a little shorter, sometimes it can be a little longer. Now, if you're a tall guy and if you have a long torso, you will need a longer tie. If you're a shorter gentleman, you need a shorter tie. We at Fort Belvedere understand that different men need different tie lengths. And so all of our three-fold ties come in short, regular, and long, so you can find the right tie for your needs. All the ties we use in this video today can be purchased in our shop here, where we also have a lot of other ties. 
If you want to learn more about the hallmarks of a quality tie, please check out this video here. If you want to learn how to store a tie, you can check out this one. All right, now that you know the three easiest tie knots and you understand how you have to pair them with your collar shape, you're ready to go to a cocktail night, to a business interview, or just any other occasion where a tie is required or desired. In today's video, I'm wearing a white dress shirt with a medium to classic spread collar. I'm combining it with an interesting tie in turquoise and orange with a diamond pattern that is printed by Fort Belvedere, which you can find in the shop here. It's tied with a Kelvin knot, which perfectly fills out that space of my collar. It's then paired with a vintage cashmere blazer from Sulka. It is navy, has patch pockets, and white mother of pearl buttons. The pocket square picks up the white color of the dress shirt and has a navy blue X or cross stitch, which ties the whole outfit together, but highlighting the handwork with that unusual cross stitch. It's also from Fort Belvedere. You can find it in our shop here. The pants are in a gray Prince of Wales check with a red overplaid, their vintage polo, and to pick up the red color of the tie. My shoes are burgundy or oxblood penny loafers, and I'm combining them with a burgundy red belt with a silver palladium plated buckle because it goes well with the red silver combination of my ring. 